Let's now take a look at how a CUDA program is organized in code. The biggest thing to remember is that the CPU is in control. That is, the host controls the entire flow of the program. The flow of the program begins just as any normal C program would, beginning in the main function. Sequential flow of the program occurs as normal until we reach a portion of the code that we want to offload onto the GPU. This is achieved through launching a kernel, which is executed on the device as a grid. Control of the program is immediately returned to the host. The main C function continues from the point directly after the kernel launch. The main function continues to execute any serial code until we launch another kernel. One thing to note here is that the main C function does not wait on the kernel's completion. So if we need to gather the results from a specific kernel launch, we need to create an explicit barrier in the host code to tell the main C function to wait on the kernel's completion to continue. We will cover this asynchronous host and device execution in more detail soon. Just remember that the host code does not wait on the kernel's completion unless explicitly told to do so. Let's now consider the syntax of a kernel launch. A kernel launch is just like calling any normal C function. The launch begins with the name of the kernel that we are executing and parameters passed into the kernel are placed inside the parentheses. The only difference between a kernel launch and a function call is that we must specify the kernel's grid and block dimensions which are passed into the kernel launch inside the triple chevron brackets. So before we launch a kernel we need to configure its launch parameters. These configuration parameters define the grid and block dimensions. The values of x, y, and z in the parentheses are integer values. DIM3 is a CUDA data structure that is simply a set of integers that correspond to the size of the x, y, and z dimensions. In the code shown, grid size and block size are the DIM3 data structure variable names. Let's take another look at our previous example to demonstrate how to implement this kernel launch syntax. We first configure the grid and block dimensions, which in this example, the grid dimension is of size 3 by 2, and the block dimension is of size 4 by 3. We then launch the kernel with the specified configuration parameters as seen in the example. Let's take a closer look at the flow of a CUDA program. One thing to remember is that the host and device have different memory regions. In order to operate on any data inside a kernel, we first need to allocate memory on the device. Next, we need to copy any relevant data into the device's memory region that we previously allocated. This copying of data between the host and device is one of the most important and limiting aspects that drives the flow of a CUDA program. We then launch the kernel with a specific grid and block dimension determined by the configuration parameters. When we need to retrieve the results obtained from a kernel's execution, we have to copy the data back from the device to the host. We'll discuss these memory management concepts in greater detail in the following two slides. Allocating device memory is analogous to allocating memory in C. Recall that in C, the function to allocate memory is malloc. The function to deallocate memory in C is free. Analogously, to allocate memory on the device, we use the function CUDA malloc. CUDA malloc takes two arguments. The first argument is the memory location that we want to copy the data to on the device. And the second argument is the size of the memory region that we want to allocate. To deallocate memory on the device, we simply use the keyword CUDA free, similar to C's function free. To transfer data between the host and device, we use the function CUDA memcopy. CUDA memcopy takes four arguments. The first argument is a pointer to an address of the memory that we are copying into. The second argument is a pointer to an address of the memory that we are copying from. The third argument is the size of the data that we are transferring in units of bytes. Finally, the fourth argument is the direction in which we are transferring the data. 
If we are transferring data from the host to the device, we set the direction to CUDA mem copy host to device. If we are transferring the data from the device to the host, we set the direction to CUDA mem copy device to host. Let's now look at an example CUDA program that will tie together all of the concepts we've discussed up to this point. We begin the program by stepping into the main function. Next, we're going to define two variables that are pointers to ints. Now since the host and device have separate memory regions, dereferencing a device pointer on the host would cause the program to crash. In order to differentiate between host and device variables, we are going to follow a naming convention that consists of preceding any variable that lives on the host with an H and preceding the name of any variable that lives on the device with a D. Next, we allocate device memory using the function CUDA malloc while passing in its two parameters. The first parameter is a pointer that is pointing to the address of the memory that we are allocating on the device. The second parameter is simply the size of the memory region that we are allocating. In a real program, there would already be data stored in the host variable. So let's just assume that H underscore C is already initialized with data in this example. We then use CUDA mem copy to copy this data from the host memory into the device's memory. Next, we set up the configuration parameters to specify the grid and block dimensions of the kernel launch. In this example, the grid and block dimensions are both of size 1 by 1 by 1. The kernel is then launched with its configuration parameters inside of the triple chevron brackets. We pass into the kernel any arguments inside the kernel's parentheses. Note that the kernel launch in this example is executed as a single block containing a single thread. We then copy the results from the kernel launch back from the device onto the host using CUDA mem copy. And finally, we deallocate any memory that we previously allocated. The return zero value concludes the main function.